Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So I think there's no doubt that Dog with a Blog is the main show on Disney Channel that receives the most hate. And I'm gonna be honest, I have been very against the show ever since the beginning. I've always said that it's like the worst show on Disney Channel. But I've gotta be honest, I have never actually sat down and watched a Dog with a Blog episode. So who am I to say it's the worst show when I've never actually watched the show? And so I thought it was only fair that I watched the first episode and then talk to you guys about how I felt about this episode and about Dog with a Blog in general because I know it gets a lot of hate, but it got like three seasons, so obviously people liked it or else it would have gotten cancelled right away. Um, so yeah, with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So first I'm going to be doing a little bit of a plot summary of the first episode, just because I feel like a lot of other people actually haven't watched an episode either. So this will kind of help you guys understand what the show is about. Then I'm going to talk about what I did like and what I didn't like, and then my overall final thoughts on Dog with a Blog after actually watching an episode. So the show starts out, we have this new blended family. We've got the older brother, who is actually the guy from Lemonade Mouth and then the oldest sister who is the little devil from Sunny with a Chance. So they keep on fighting, they're really not getting along, and so then the parents decide to adopt a dog because that'll fix all their problems apparently. And so then obviously, as I'm sure everybody knew going into the show, they find out that the dog can talk, but they decide to keep this a secret from their parents because they're afraid that they'll freak out and like want to do experiments on him or something. I'm not too sure what they were afraid of, but I'm pretty sure that they do find out later on in the series that their dog can talk and like it's fine, so I don't know. Anyways, they find out their dog can talk, everything's fine, until they're arguing again over who can get the living room, because that seems to be a common argument between the two of them, which is interesting. And then the girl from Sunny with a Chance says something about how she doesn't really care about Stan in a bluff during the argument, but then Stan over here, so then he runs away because he thinks that nobody loves him anymore, um, I think. So then they end up working together and going to the pound and rescuing Stan and then they go home and everything is, seems to be fine. And then we end the episode off with the dog writing all of his events down in the blog that he runs. <laughs> So some surprising things I actually liked about this episode was the whole blended family aspect. I really liked that it was a blended family. We really don't see much of those on Disney Channel, and so the more, I think, the better. Although there were some things I kind of felt were a little bit unrealistic. They talk about only having living together for a little while now, yet they're both already calling their parents mom and dad. And I'm like, that doesn't happen. It might in some blended families, but that's definitely not how things work in mine, and I feel like a lot of people call their step-parents by their first name. Obviously, there are some cases where stepkids decide to call their step-parent mom or dad, which is completely fine in that situation, but it just didn't really make sense here because they already established that they haven't been living together for that long. I also think it was really smart for them to have that big age difference between the two step-siblings because it could have easily went into a Life with Derek kind of situation where there's some tension between the two of them, but because of that big age difference, that's not going to be an issue, so that was really smart on the show's part. And I do have to admit, the chemistry between the siblings is really good and believable, as well as the chemistry between the two parents. They seem like they know each other really well, and I like the scenes with them together. I think that they worked pretty well with one another. But moving on, of course there are going to be things that I didn't like with Dog with a Blog, I've got to talk about them. So the animation, first of all, it's just not that impressive. It kind of reminded me of like watching Air Bud or something like that. And I gotta be honest, I found the dog to be kind of annoying. Like none of his jokes stuck with me and I was just kind of like, why are you talking? Like what is your purpose of talking? And then they never really explain why he does talk. He just says that he was born with it, which I'm like, that's kind of boring. Like if you're a talking dog, at least like have some sort of reason as to why you can talk to like make that a bit more entertaining. Like just the fact that he was born with it, it was like, come on, come up with something cooler than that. <laughs> I also found that sometimes it was hard to tell the difference between when the dog was talking or when he was just writing in his blog because of, like I said earlier, the mouth animation really wasn't that great. And there isn't really a change in the sound of his voice between when he is writing in his blog or when he's like talking to the kids. I also just felt like, why does this dog need to talk? Like he's not saying anything that's useful. He's basically just like a talking dog because that's kids' dreams, I guess, to have their dog talk. But then it's like, why does he need to talk? Nothing that he's saying is, like, important information. His character is kind of unlikable and annoying, and so it's just frustrating. But overall, I was surprised by the episode. I don't think it's as bad as everyone says that Dog with a Blog is. And honestly, I think a lot of people that say that Dog with a Blog is bad have not actually sat down and watched the show. I wouldn't say it's a bad show, I just don't think it's for me. It's not my kind of thing. Like, I couldn't see myself actually watching another episode. However, if any of you guys out there really like this show, and there's, like, a particular episode that's really good like maybe there's a really great ship on the show that like I just haven't given a chance leave in the comments down below if there is another episode that you think I should watch I honestly don't think I could ever really get into the show not because it's bad I just don't think it's for me personally and a lot of times on Disney Channel their shows are perfect for the whole family but this one in particular it seems like it's really shooting for a younger audience and sometimes some of the jokes I almost felt like belonged on Disney Junior instead overall I do see why some people like it like imagine if your dog talked like that's a pretty cool concept on its own I think the fact that he has a blog 
is the part that's like, why? <laughs> like I literally wrote down in my notes, why does he have a blog though? I don't understand why he needs a blog. No dogs are reading blogs. Like, is anyone actually reading this blog that the dog has? I don't think so. So like, why have a blog? But I'm happy I gave it a chance. Like, I don't like judging something when I've never actually seen it. But I want to know what you guys think. Have you watched Dog with a Blog? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, guys, my name is Caitlin. You can follow me everywhere at Kate Loves Disney. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell because I post new videos every single Friday. But that's all I have to say for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you very, very soon.